Yo, 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 guys, welcome to another episode of Dual School, where we're going to be checking out the latest expansion, which has come out just a few days ago, uh, prior to this recording anyway, I should say. It came over, uh, came out on Saturday in America, again, as of the date of this recording, but let's get into it. Um, we do have some boosters to open as well during this video, so we'll do that. Some of these time boosters down here and a few others as well that I want to get into as well, just because this set is really fun. Um, I'm loving this recommended booster, but anyway, without further ado, Let's get into why these figures in particular are so freaking awesome. Here we go. Um, definitely, um, I, I can agree with some of the other PokeTubers on YouTube right now, just saying that this is one of the stronger banners in a while, uh, for sure. And it's also got me some like the most hype in a long while as well. Partially due to some of my favorite Pokemon from Gen 1 being featured, along with other generations as well. But let's get into it. We have Mega Gengar right here to start off. Let's see what we have here. So, Mega Gengar is insane, one of the best Megas, if not the best Mega in my opinion. Um, it's a shame it only gets to be around for 7 turns, but let's look into it right now. It says, its ability, Otherworldly Talons, this Pokemon can MP move past other Pokemon. So, something you would expect from a Ghost, however, Pokemon next to this Pokemon cannot move using the effects of moves, abilities, or energy. So that's kind of freaky. That also means you're opposing or your own Pokemon as well. So something to keep in mind, I do believe that is the case. Also, opposing Pokemon, and this is where it starts to get pretty broken. Opposing Pokemon next to this Pokemon cannot make MP moves. Your ghost and poison type Pokemon each deal plus 10 damage. Like all Mega Evolu uh, Evolution Pokemon have done so far, they do, pro they do promote their own typings, giving them plus 10 damage, but again, Opposing Pokemon next to this Pokemon cannot use MP moves, so they can attack you, I guess. But if they want, like, if you want to block your own goal, they can't reach it. If you want to start advancing towards their goal, they won't be able to keep up with you. So if you have like, I don't know if it's possible to have two Mega Gengar on a team, but at least one can help out so much. You can make those seven turns really worth it, being able to slow down your opponent's advancements or pulling back as well. And then let's get into its attacks right here as well. A miss size of only 4, so when you get it to level 5, nothing to worry about as far as that goes. Toxic is only a 1 star purple, unfortunate, but that can be worked around easily. Um, it says that the battle opponent becomes noxious, that's great, minus 40 against your Pokemon's attacks. A decent size of dodge, 16. Abyssal grip, 110 solid damage. And if this Pokemon faints, the battle opponent moves to your PC. So I think that's pretty darn broken. I'm digging that a lot. Um, toxic is also nothing really to worry about because I mean, say theoretically, if you were to go from evolving Ghastly all the way to Gengar, that would become a level five. And if you don't want to work that hard working from Ghastly, you could do Haunter, make it a level four. Um, I'm sorry, that would actually make it level three. So it can be max level four stars, which is still really good. You can negate Lugia pretty easily that way, naturally that is. So not a bad call at all. Um, and if you just go from Gengar to Mega Gengar, it's a decent two star purple with that. So nothing really to, too much to worry about that. It's a very solid, very scary Mega Pokemon to move on, um, to run into. And then moving on, let's go into Mega Venusaur, which I think is a pretty cool guy. Maybe the weaker out of the three Megas in this set, in my opinion, but but I do love what it can do for sure. Let's get into it. It has its huge ability name, Cruel Blossom's Incursion, <laughs> saying that this Pokemon can MP move over poisoned and noxious Pokemon, therefore showing its um, potential synergy with Gengar as well, along with the other poison types, obviously. Um, you can definitely throw a Crobat in this deck and try to make it work. But anyway, yeah, it can MP move past poisoned or noxious Pokemon, and then Pokemon that this Pokemon moved over gain weight five. So that's insane. That's a long that's a long time to have to deal with the weight. That's pretty scary. And then your grass type Pokemon and poison type get pl plus 10 damage to their attacks. So that's really, really, really cool. I'm totally digging that. Um, I like its purple and white attacks as well. Solar Beam, a very strong 130 damage that competes with um, Deoxys attack right there. Venom Whip is two stars. One Pokemon within two steps becomes noxious, but if we if we evolve it at least from Venusaur, easily becomes a three star attack, I do believe. So that's really cool. So you're kind of promoting your own strategy with Venom Whip as well. Not many uh, uh, turns to really work with it, but still not bad. And then a miss size of four, very easy to get rid of once you level it up to five. It's gonna take some, um, some EX, I guess, like rare metals, but in the end, if you can do it, why not? 
Anyway, let's move on. And then one of my favorite Megas in the game right now, a very strong boy indeed, Mega Blastoise. And it's, its attack is, or its ability is a really cool name. Um, Intense Shell Cannon. This Pokemon deals plus 10 damage for each water type Pokemon on the field. And your water type Pokemon each deal plus 20 damage. So that's really cool. Um, to go further from there as well, so it does, it, but Mega Blastoise deals plus 10 damage for each water Pokemon on the field. But then if you're adding Manaphy on that, turn that into 30 damage. And then plus the 20 damage you get for each, for your water type in general, then that's another 20 damage. So you're easily advancing to 50, plus 50 damage if you happen to have Manaphy and plenty of water Pokemon on your team as well. It's pretty crazy. I mean, if you think about it, this Pokemon deals plus 10, da plus 10 damage for each water type Pokemon on the field. If you have a team of six, you're doing plus 60. So then Hydro Pump goes from 100 damage all the way to 160, and that's just with any water Pokemon you have in combination alone, not including Manaphy as well, which is really crazy. Um, anyway, let's move on. It has a little bit of miss though, a total of 12 it looks like, but you can at least decrease one of them to zero by the time you level up um, all the way to level five. And then of course you can take care of that other eight quite a bit once you get to level 10, you'll end up again with only four. So that's not bad. Uh, Turtle Missile is a pretty cool blue attack in my opinion. Uh, spin for one of your opponent's Pokemon on the field. If they spin a white attack, they are knocked out. If this Pokemon has evolved, this effect repeats for each time this Pokemon has evolved. So if you simply go from Blastoise to Mega Blastoise, you get to spin twice. So say if you're going up against a Pokemon with a lot of white attacks, such as like, I don't know, Virizion, for example, that's a really quick way to try to knock it out. The odds will be a little more in your favor, in my opinion, anyway. Or if you happen to go up against a really strong Pokemon that only has white physical attacks, then again, you're gonna be in a really good position that way. So again, you can kind of see how quickly this can be insane. Because say if you were to do with War Total, that's three spins. Squirtle, you get four spins. So just completely raising your odds of knocking out the Pokemon you need to get knocked out on your opponent's side of the field. And then next up here is Gengar, the smaller version of Mega, obviously, but still nonetheless should not be taken, um, should not be thought less of for sure. As its ability Night Stalker, saying that this Pokemon can pass through other Pokemon when it MP moves, much like its Mega Form. And then if it passes through Poisoned, Noxious, or Sleeping Pokemon, they will faint. So that's really freaking scary if you can couple this Pokemon with others. I was lucky enough to pull a couple of them um, in my last episode. I'll be sure to tag that for you guys with a card up above. If you're watching on, um, on a computer or mobile, you'll be able to find that link right above me. And that will be where we opened like three 10 packs and then multiple quadruple boosters along with a, a bunch of other stuff. It was a cool video. It's, it was a lot of fun recording that. But anyway, let's move on to its attacks as well. Saying that um, it has purple attack, Contagious Terror, two-star purple, pretty decent. The battle opponent and a succession of opposing Pokemon adjacent to it gain weight three. So a cool way, again, to slow down your opponent's adva advancements for sure. If you level this guy up to level five, you'll you'll get uh, missed down to four. If you want to take it all the way to 10, which I don't think is a bad idea at all, then you can also um, just get rid of your miss entirely. Um, dodge is 16, pretty darn decent, and the Nightshade a very solid 100 damage. And if we're evolving um, Mega Gengar up to or Gengar to Mega Gengar, you're just boosting that guy's attack side from I believe 110 to 120. So pretty darn cool in my opinion. Uh, let's move on. And Nightshade with um, it's 40% of the board, so that's pretty rad. And now next up, Malamar, which is a Pokemon I definitely underestimated at first. But now that I've seen videos of it on Twitter and such, where it destroys one particular deck specifically, uh, let's get into it right now. You guys might already understand what I'm talking about, but if not, we'll talk about it at this moment. So this guy has really cool typing, dark and psychic, with its ability Enig Enigmatic Signal. For effects that move this Pokemon's battle opponent, you decide whether it moves. Well, uh, yeah, whether um, you decide whether it it is used. I'm sorry which Pokemon is targeted and where the targeted Pokemon will be moved to. So as some of you might know, if you have Cosmo Energy, that allows your opponents or your own Deoxys uh, deck, so if you have, I don't know, at least three, maybe up to six Deoxys in, in your, on your deck, if say if you were uh, gonna be battled against 
and say if you have a Deoxys and then your opponent wants to attack you, you get the chance to be able to choose which Deoxys you want to actually have in the battle. If it's more advantageous to have your, your defense form Deoxys take on the, the opponent Pokemon, then you can do that. However, with Malamar, now you get to choose which Deoxys you want to get taken out or to go up against. So say if you feel you have an advantage against speed form, you get to switch out the speed form instead. They don't have a choice in the matter anymore. Um, so that's pretty darn insane. That's just that, and that, that's just one way to think about it. For decks that run two of the same Pokemon, or sometimes you'll see three, not as often, but you definitely can see some Pokemon run be run two of in a deck. And so that's another way that this can be taken advantage of, not with this ability, but with an attack that we're going to get into right now. So it has a pretty big total of miss, 16. That's a little heavy, but still that can be lowered quite a bit. I believe down to eight if you level this guy up to level five, which again may be worth it. Psycho Cut does a total of 120 damage if you land on it twice in a row. And then let's move on to Mass Hypnosis, which is how this guy can also take on De Deoxys. Not only with its ability Enigmatic Signal, but with this. It's a two-star purple, pretty decent, and it says that the battle opponent and all Pokemon of the same species as the battle opponent fall asleep. And again, I've seen a video of this on Twitter before. This person was about to win with his Deoxys deck, and then he was able to land this, the other opponent was able to land Mass Hypnosis with Malamar, and the entire team went to sleep. The person with the Deoxys deck forfeited the match immediately because there's nothing they could do. As long as you don't have to battle the Deoxys, they're not gonna be woken up for any reason at all. And all of them were on the field, all six were on the field. There was no way to wake them all up. It was pretty awesome. Um, anyway, and then on top of that, if you evolve Malamar from, uh, if you evolve it from Inke, then it becomes a three-star purple attack, which means that you're at least negating your three-star purple attack opponent from your Deoxys as well. So pretty cool to think about. Let's move on though. We have Spirit Tomb, which is a pretty interesting Pokemon. It, I don't know what to think of this guy yet. I haven't gone up against one. So if you guys happen to ha run Spirit Tomb in your deck, let me know what you like about it and how you like to use its, um, its strategies. I would really love to hear about it. Let me know in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Because if those of you that think that it isn't a good Pokemon, let me know why. And if you think this guy has potential, again, let us know. Let's move on to the details though and get more into specifics. Um, let's see, its ability is Grudge Stone, which is pretty cool. When this Pokemon moves from the bench to the field, spin a Pokemon. If it spins a white attack, attach a curse marker to it. Your Pokemon on the field can pass through this Pokemon when using an MP move. So it has a similar, I guess, advantage that Trevenant has. You can just go straight through it. There are a number of other Pokemon that have that ability as well, which is really neat. But you curse marker any Pokemon if it happens to land a white attack, which is a cool way to start excluding your opponent's Pokemon really quickly. Then it has Destiny Bond, which is a nice little sacrificial way to just take out your opponent's Pokemon if you need to. Shadow Sneak is 28% of the, of the wheel with a solid 68 damage. That's really good in my opinion for a gold attack, for sure. Now Curse is pretty cool, obviously, because again, you get to attach Curse Markers to your battle opponents, and if it happens to be knocked out in this condition, it's, ex it's excluded from the duel, which is pretty cool. And then, uh, no meaning to rhyme there. Anyway, um, its size of, of miss is 8, which again, if you level up to 10, obviously you can take out that miss um, completely, so that's a really cool. Let's move on though, but again, I think it's really cool. The only thing is, I feel like the only way you can get it out on the board is if you long throw it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but with zero MP, I don't understand how it can really move anywhere. So something to think about. Again, if you guys can have um, more to say about that, please let me know, I'm totally interested. And then another really cool Pokemon in my opinion, I've gone up against a couple of them. Luckily, I think I've won against every deck that used one, but I feel the potential and I've been hurt by its potential a lot, and it's Sableye. Really cool art to the figure as well, I dig how he looks. But anyway, let's move on. Um, it has its ability, Hacking Gems. This Pokemon can pass through other Pokemon when it MP moves. Since it's Ghost type, it kind of gains that advantage, that inherent advantage, I suppose. And then when this Pokemon is on the field, opposing Pokemon deal minus one damage. So like the opposite of what Spinarak does for you, which is kind of neat. Um, Confused Raid is a three star purple attack that's amazing. The battle opponent becomes confused. Shadow Sneak, an even more stronger gold attack now with 70 damage. Again, I feel like gold attacks are slowly starting to climb up in damage. It's pretty cool. I'm digging it a lot. And then Will-O-Wisp is only one star, but that's kind of 
I guess, typical in Pokemon Duel right now. Uh, Will-O-Wisp is usually only one star. I'm not sure if I've ever seen one higher than that, unless it's been evolved into, I suppose. Um, but then again, miss size, eight, level up to 10, no more miss. You just get a whole bunch of big gold attack and purple attack as well. Now, let me ask you guys this though. What would you prefer to level up? Confuse Ray, three stars, that's a lot of priority, or even more priority with Shadow Sneak being a gold attack at 70 damage, what would you want to expand on your wheel more so? Um, would you like to do a little bit of, of Shadow Sneak and Confuse Ray? Let me know what you guys think, because I am pretty, um, I don't know, it's a toss up for me. I think I personally would go more for Shadow Sneak, but you guys might have different plans in, in mind. Anyway, let's move on. I think we have a few more to go. Yes, Inke is what makes Malamar even more broken, and we'll get into why right now. Upside Down Evolution, which is an ability that's been passed on since Gen 6, which is kind of fun. Uh, whenever this Pokemon moves from a PC to the bench, it can evolve. So it has the EV syndrome, not really a syndrome, the EV advantage more so. Um, pretty much, yeah, it just makes it really, really, really easy to get um, Inke to Malamar. Especially if you run Max Revive just to make sure, which is uh, someone that, that, comment, that commented in my last 10-pack uh, booster opening video, he recommended Max Revive and I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense actually. Why not? Because then you can immediately start stalling your opponent's Deoxys team, or whatever team, obviously, that runs the same species within the deck. Anyway, Psybeam is pretty decent because it's only 30 damage, making it even easier to get this guy to, um, to the PC, because again, you're not really wanting this guy to live, you want it to get knocked out. The only way I could see wanting Inke to like survive longer is if it were a three star, a three MP runner, which it's not, it's only two, which is still cool. Um, but anyway, yeah, 30 damage, it's easy to knock out, it's his, easy to hit over. It's blue attack is decent, hide, if one of your, po uh, if your, one of your own Pokemon neighbors is Pokemon, the two switch places which can be cool, I guess. It's a little switch situational, so I'm not sure how great it is, but um, I don't know. I don't know if I would really want to level that up. Uh, I, I don't think so. Because uh, again, I want this guy to go down as quickly as possible to get Malamar out if necessary. Anyway, we have Psybeam again, which again is easy to knock out and you get a free confusion on your po on your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, it's a miss size is four, and then we have one that's also eight as well. But again, you can knock it down pretty quickly if you give it to get it to level 4 or 10. I'm not sure if you want to get this guy to level 10 though. I'd, I'd say level 5 is decent enough. And then Hypnosis, which I do dig, is 2 star purple, pretty darn solid, and the battle opponent obviously falls asleep, which is really cool in my opinion. I think this is the attack to level up over Hyde. Again, if you guys think differently, please let me know and as to why you feel that way as well, just because I, I love to hear your guys' opinions as well. This is why I do this show. Dual School is about having a conversation and about sharing strategies and what you like about Pokemon, whether they're top tier in the meta or if, they're, if you just think you have a fun, bold strategy, let us know. Let's talk about it. Anyway, let's move on. And if from here on out, I believe it's just Pokemon that have gotten recent buffs, but I do want to go into it just because it's kind of fun. Uh, Puchiana, don't really, really don't really need to get into because it has, it's pretty self-explanatory. 50 crunch, 30 bite, it has hide, just like Inke. We know if it lands on the blue, it switches uh, with a Pokemon, with your own neighbor Pokemon that's next to it. That's all there is to it. Tyranitar though is pretty cool. Let's get into it. Uh, when this Pokemon evolves, it will gain one MP. So does that mean that if it, if it evolves from Pupitar, or I'm sorry, from, yeah, from Pupitar and into the Tyranitar, it gains one MP? Or is it that when the Omega evolves, that it gains one MP? I'm not sure about that. I think it, because I've never evolved from Pupitar to Tyranitar before. So if you guys do know, please let me know in the comments. I would appreciate that. I don't really run Tyranitar very often. I did like once, and then I just never went back to it. Maybe I will for this recent, or for this upcoming gym though as well. Anyway. Um, Earthquake 110, very solid. All Pokemon on the field spin, except this one. If they spin a miss, they are knocked out. And I do believe that it, yeah, it, it is good because if you run a team of Tyranitar, then those Tyranitar do not have to spin. I could be wrong about that, but again, if you guys know, let me know. Um, also, let's get into Mighty Yena, which also recently got a buff. I do appreciate this guy a lot. Now, I actually run a deck that's gotten some pretty decent mileage. Um, Taunt is cool, it's just like Weavile. If you spin purple, you spin again. Crunch, 70, pretty decent. Now, Ice Wing is the attack that I've been leveling up personally. Let me know what you guys would rather level up. 
but Ice Fang has been doing some pretty good for me. Um, if this Pokemon is knocked out, the battle opponent becomes frozen. I've been running this guy with an Ice type team in general. I've gone back and forth between running three Weavile and then uh, Mighty Yena and Suicune. Um, and then I've also gone from Suicune, uh, Mighty Yena to Sharpedo. And then I forget, um, and I forget what my last guy is. Who is, oh, and Glaceon as well. I evolved Eevee into Glaceon personally. That's what I've been doing for both teams. And it's been working out pretty decently for me as well. Um, more often than not, I end up freezing multiple Pokemon and then I just walk my way into the goal or I just get easy knockouts with it. So it's pretty nice. Haunter is also something that's pretty cool. It got something that I appreciate. It changed its, um, instead of confusing, it now has Toxic, which makes more sense because it's a poison type Pokemon. And so Toxic, your opponent becomes noxious, which then again further promotes what you can do with Gengar and Mega Gengar, obviously, because again, if they MP move through Poison Noxious, or I believe a Sleep Pokemon as well, then they start knocking them out effortlessly. So something to keep in mind, something that is really, really, really cool, and also keep in mind that with the Ghost Type Gym that's coming, uh, Dark Type Pokemon are gaining plus 20 damage, and also, <clears throat> Also, a uh, Ghost-type Pokemon are gaining 1 MP if their MP is naturally 1 or 2. So your Haunter become 3 space runners, Gengar is 3 space, Mega Gengar is a 3, a three MP mover as well. So I think that about does it for us, but let's move on really quickly. If you guys want, we're going to open up some boosters, let's have some fun. Uh, we just have one, or we, we have like two, uh, three. Um, two purple, we might get something decent out of that, we'll find out. Snubble, that's fine. But we do have two purple to open. Let's get into it right now. There you go. Maybe we'll get lucky. I have no idea. Oh, rare? Sylveon. Cool. All right. I, I, you know what? I have three Sylveon at level five, but I do kind of want to chain level them. Why not? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Cool. I actually kind of miss running my fairy deck. I think about going back to it every once in a while. I still have it saved on here, but I just haven't used it in quite, yeah, quite some time. Chikorita, you can take out special conditions whenever it lands on the field. That's cool. I can use a rare ingot for sure. And then common rare metal. Nice. Now, you know what? Again, I am digging this set a lot. I think we should just go into single boosters right now and just open a few of them. I won't go too overboard, but let's have some fun with it. There we go. Yeah, we have 20 saved up and we used quite a bit in the last video that I did talk about earlier. I recommend you guys check out that video. It was really fun. Again, we opened up three 10 packs and then multiple quad boosters as well. It was a lot of fun. Here we go. And we got some really sick pulls out of it either. Um, when you guys watch that video, stick around for the end because the final 10 pack opening is ridiculous. I've never, I've never opened anything like that before. So just keep that in mind. Oh, that's my girlfriend mentioning something to me on Facebook. Sorry about that. Anyway, let's go again. Hi, Sin. Let's see. Let's see what we're going to get. I'm excited. But yeah, seriously, guys, that final 10 pack in the episode that I annotated for you guys, and I'll make sure to leave at the end of this video linked. Um, check that ish out because, again, I've never seen anything like that before. It was insane. Wow, the amount of crazy pulls there. I I don't know what to say about it. Frogadier, great. I can always chain level more Frogadier right now because um, Greninja is a decent gold tacker uh, EX three move three space mover Pokemon. That was a lot of adjectives and descriptives to add to it, but it just goes to show that Greninja is a pretty decent poke. Let's go on though. Let's see what else we can get here. Another uncommon it looks like. Crawdon, cool. Again, another decent gold attacker as well. I really dig it, and plus it has guillotine, if you get lucky enough to get to land guillotine um, at the advantage, then that's an easy automatic knockout, pretty cool. Let's see what else we're going to get here. Here we go. Oh my god, okay, looks like we're getting at least rare. What are we getting? Murkrow? Okay, okay. I'll take Murkrow. I was really hoping for a Malamar, not going to lie. I, I would love to pull a Malamar right now. Again, the odds are pretty uh, against us, just because we're going single boosters. Not really guaranteed anything um, below. Uh, I mean, usually uncommons are what you're gonna get, but who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Oh, Pancham, cool. There you go, that's another amazing un uncommon Pokemon in my opinion, holy crap. Nice, and we can use some more material because I'm saving up. I would love to save up for a Manaphy and a Mega Blastoise because yeah, that deck is pretty fun. 
a little gimmicky, but at the same time, I don't know, I kind of love like fun little strategies like that. So let's see here. Here we go. Are we gonna get uncommon here? Oh, Mighty Aina. I'm gonna totally fuse that with my other Mighty Aina. Like I said, I've been enjoying it with my Ice Team a lot. Uh, let's see, here we go. Like when you get to sheer cold, a frozen type Pokemon, it's it just it's a really good feeling excluding Pokemon from the duel like that. It's pretty sick. Let's see what we're gonna get. Here we go. Oh, Bannet. Okay, cool. We got another rare. Even though I have the uncommon coloring, I don't know why this game does that. I think it just likes to like make you underestimate your pool at times. But anyway, let's go again. Let's do one more. Why not? Let's do one more and see what we get here. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Let's smash it till it works. Oh my god, it worked. What are we getting? What are we getting? What are we getting? Yo, we got a spirit tomb. Brand new in the set. Again, this guy is pretty weird. When you guys think of strategies for him, let me know because I would love to hear what you guys think. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching another episode of Dual School. Be on the lookout for the next episode. It will be coming when the next banner drops. And of course, I do want to do more booster openings as well. Probably for this banner. I'm looking forward to it. But otherwise, guys, if you guys have anything else you'd like to say in the comment section, let me know. Just keep it kind. Keep it friendly. Keep it respectful. I love you all. Later!